So my next guest this afternoon is Amin Tabotaboy. You must be a very happy man. Yeah, it was a very really tough match against him. And uh, also yesterday, I had to, I was in must be situation with Black, which is very difficult against Haik, he's a very strong opponent. But yeah, I could. I could. So you've defeated uh, Martin Rashidan in the tie breaks, one half to half. Before we go into that, let's talk about this second game yesterday. You were in a must win situation because you'd lost the first game. And even so, you were able to pull off an incredible win in the pawn ending. So when Martiroshian exchanged knights, what were you thinking at that moment? Did you calculate to the end? Were you sure you were winning? Yeah, to be honest, in that moment, I had zero hope. I thought the game is over. Okay, whole the game, I played very, very good. But I mean, if he doesn't make mistakes, how can I win? Um, at that moment, I had really no hope. I mean, I was even ready to play for one more over and then just offer the because I, I knew there is just nothing to do. And I was so shocked that he took on F3 because like he found the fortress. He know that I cannot break through. So why he took on this? I, I, I believe he missed King G1, but there is just no need to take it. And I feel like he was a bit tired at that moment and maybe, maybe a bit excited that if he takes on F3, the game is just over. But usually these kind of things doesn't happen because I mean, if you know the fortress, then why would you take on F3? Um, I think that was just a miracle that he took on F3 because I had zero hope. I was not even considering Knight takes F3. I didn't calculate it at the first. But when he took, I just immediately saw that I have D3 and King comes to G2 and D2 is me. Well, I can tell you your facial expressions on the video were uh, quite shocking. No, you seemed in shock. And in his defense, uh, all of us, uh, at least me, and I'm, I'm sure you as well have passed, gone through these type of situations where you're there, you're there, you're there, and you just see a forced way to make the draw, and there's an intermediate move you miss. He probably missed the Queen T G2 check after yeah. King G1. Yeah, I think so. I mean, he thought it's over, like his Queen Angam, it's over. And because, uh, yeah, he, I, I think he thought that I should go either King G2 or G King G3, and then he quizzed me with check. Yeah. I definitely missed Queen G2, yeah. Yeah, that's what we were thinking that might have been his miscalculation. Yeah. So let's go to today's uh, round. After winning that game on demand, you come here today to play the tiebreak. First game, complete madness. Talk a bit about it, please. Yeah, it was, he prepared it for me. Um, I believe I had to go rook d8 instead of b6. But I just, uh, how do you say, I mixed the opening, I, th I thought. I, I could remember something that if I go b6, white goes queen d6, and then queen e6, queen g3, queen g4, and it's like repetition. But I think b6 was a very bad move. And after that, I couldn't find a you know, clear win for him. Of course, he has attack. He, he, he's putting a lot of pressure on me. But mm -hmm. I couldn't find a um, force win for him, and it was difficult to attack. I mean, overall, I think it was a very you know, messy game. Yeah, of course, the computer always finds a way to win, but in practice, it was complicated. The second game was smoother for you. You got an interesting position with these pawns on e5 and f4, and you were just pressing. Yeah, at the second game, well, to be honest, uh, I didn't know this idea, which he played with uh, queen d8 and knight d6. And after, like, I played, I exchanged the bishop. I was even ready to offer him a draw because I was like, I felt like he knows the position very well, and I was not so familiar. But I come up with this idea that if I just push f4, f5, and if I exchange the knights. I have very good attacking chances. So after also I played h4, it was, I believe it was under pressure. And then he decided to go for f5, but I think after f5, I don't know if, if it was a good move or not, but I mm. think this structure is always much better for whites. And yeah. And, I, and in the end, I think he, when I played e6, just he should have just taken on e6, I believe. Yeah. And then I take on b5, h6 was okay. very strange because after queen e5, I mean, you don't even have to calculate to understand the position is winning, yeah. I think. Yeah. The computer is giving a clear advantage, well, a decisive advantage at that point. Yeah, yeah. after queen e5, I think just over, yeah. Okay, my last question. So you qualified to the, I don't even know now, the semi uh, quarterfinals. Okay, um, you're facing Fedor Shev, yeah. a strong Russian grandmaster. You were telling me before you played twice against him. How did those games go? Yeah, I won both, both of games with Black, but I mean, I know him. He's very, very, very strong and he's very motivated for this tournament. So also this match is going to be very, very difficult. Like, it's not like I think that, okay, I beat him, so I'll, I'll can, I can do it again. He's so, you know, shape and he's so motivated for this World Cup. So it's a very difficult match. It's going to be a tough match. You've got a lot on the line, not only advancing in the World Cup, but also you probably know that the four players reached semifinals. 
are automatically qualified for the Grand Prix for next year. That will be a huge team. It's, it's an extra bonus to get to semi-finals. If I win my next match, I, I, then I'm qualified for the Grand Prix? That's what I understand, yes. Oh, okay, okay. Hmm. Yeah, okay. You'd have to check with the arbiters just yeah. in case, but that's what I understand. So it's a very important match. Yeah, it's very, very important. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that, but yeah. Okay. okay. So good luck in the match then. Thank you very much.